Well, my second book outlet order finally arrived today. And this was the second order I made during that site-wide Mother's Day sale where um, everything was 20% off over Mother's Day weekend. So yeah, let's get started. I'm excited. I kind of remember some of what's in here, so let's see. Let me get this box. Here is the box. All right, let's open this. There we go, it's open. I'm gonna put the box down now, if you don't mind. I picked up Marion Keyes' Watermelon. This is book one in the Walsh Family series, and I read this book back in high school, and that's when I first discovered and fell in love with Marion Keyes. She was probably my first real and genuine experience with chick lit fiction and women's, um, just women's fiction and that genre that they describe as chick lit. Marion Keyes is an, I want to say she's Irish, an Irish writer. Yes, she lives in Dublin, Ireland, and I quickly then went on to devour the rest of the Walsh sisters family series. It, each book focuses on a different sister and they all have their lives and their stories and this particular book focuses on, I want to say she's the eldest sister but I may be wrong, and the book really starts off with a bang because she's in the hospital having her baby and her husband has just left her. And so here she is with the newborn baby and she's been completely abandoned by her husband and she kind of has to figure out her life as a new mum, as they say, all alone and doing it on her own. I read this way back when and I remember really loving it and it was actually one of my favorite books for a period in time right around high school years, beginning of high school, like freshman year. So I really want to reread this and kind of rediscover this really great story. And this cover is different. This is not the cover I had. <laughs> Next I picked up a cover cover a copy of the Hunger Games because I actually don't own this series surprisingly I remember reading it because I borrowed it from a friend a really good friend of mine who I uh, was friends with a few years ago recommended the book to me and he lent it to me I read it and then I quickly went on to read the rest of the series except I still haven't read Makiche don't judge me I'll get to it maybe one day but I saw this on book outlet for really cheap and I have been waiting for the paperbacks so now they're in paperback so I want to reread the series finally read Mockingjay and I want to own them in paperback so I think this is a great start. Then I picked up another book that I read years ago I read this my freshman year of college so around 2005 maybe 2006 and I remember walking into the Barnes & Noble that used to be in um, on 8th Street in New York City. It is no longer there. That used to be my favorite Barnes & Noble. They replaced it with a gym. Just, just why? But anyway, that's a tangent. I remember stepping in and going into the romance, you know, romance novel section because I used to read a lot of romance novels. And this cover just really called to me. And it is called Claiming the Courtesan. The Courtesan. Yes, Claiming the Courtesan by Anna Campbell. And after I read this, I was hooked on Anna Campbell, and I would then read every single thing she would put out. This was her debut. And this is definitely different. Um, I definitely want to reread this. I've read this numerous times, but I was younger then, you know? I'm older now, and I'm more mature, and I want to reread this and see how I feel about it now, because it's kind of a scandalous romance novel. There are a lot of kind of interesting things that happen in this book. And it's like, is this Stockholm Syndrome? Is it love? Is it abuse? So yeah, I want to reread this and I want to know what my thoughts are now and I will definitely give you guys a review or wrap up or something because I want to read this soon. And I'm really liking this like big paperback edition. I read a mass market paperback so this is kind of awesome. Next up, I picked up another romance novel, and this one is by Lisa Kleepis, and this is Sugar Daddy, one of her contemporary novels, contemporary romances. She also writes historicals, 
And this one is very interesting. I really enjoyed this when I read this a couple years ago, and I've just been wanting to reread it. Lisa Kleepis writes some of my favorite romance novels, and so I always find myself coming back to her again and again. I used to own her entire collection and read them numerous times, but I have soon since gotten rid of my collection. I will probably end up <laughs> recollecting them at some point. That always happens to me. I always get rid of these books because I think that I don't want to own them anymore, and then a couple years pass and I end up recollecting them. Does that happen to anybody else, or is it just me? Anywho, um, Sugar Daddy is a book about a girl who finds herself down on her luck and the older gentleman who comes to her rescue and how that situation situation is interpreted by that older gentleman's grandson. He kind There's kind of like a miscommunication between the girl and the grandson and it kind of starts off their relationship on a rocky, rocky start, but of course you know they're going to fall in love, so it's just that journey and I really loved this one. Next up on the whole romance novel theme, I picked up three books all by Laverle Spencer and Revol La Laverle, I don't know how to pronounce her name, <laughs> Laverle Spencer is an author that I discovered a little bit later on. I think I discovered her a couple years ago and I quickly just devoured everything. I read um, all of her books on my Kindle so I would buy them and then I got rid of them and now of course I'm recollecting them again this time in paperback. So these are all books I've read before but I really wanted to reread and this one is Forsaking All Others. This one is Twice Loved and this one is Years. This one is my personal favorite. This book takes place in like 1917 on a farm and it's like this young girl travels to become a school teacher like super far away from home and she lives back then you know it was very scandalous for like females to live alone you know especially single women oh no so this family takes her in and she sort of starts off this relationship with the oldest son in the family and he's a farmer and it's on a farm and their family dynamics are crazy and this is the perfect example of the perfect slow burning romance story it just the build-up and the tension and just the uh and oh I just love it and I love the setting I love that it's 1917 and you get to ski see what it's like being a school teacher in those days living on a farm etc etc this one is about a young woman who's woman whose woman who's or woman whose husband goes out to sea and never returns you know one of those so she ends up falling for his brother I think no, no, no. She ends up falling for his best friend, and they kind of start a relationship, but then, of course, her husband returns. So, this one is about a career woman who's very driven, and she's a photographer, and she's just really into her career, and she's very strong and independent, and she usually keeps her work life and her personal life very separate, and she ends up falling for one of the models that she photographs, and he, I think he's younger, and he's just trying to, he's only modeling to pay the bills, and so they start getting to know each other and a connection forms and she's kind of battling within herself whether she wants to allow this to go forward. Then I picked up a nonfiction book by C.S. Lewis and this is Mere Christianity. And I really enjoy C.S. Lewis's nonfiction so that's why I wanted to kind of read more. And this edition is really interesting. So yeah, I really am intrigued by what this will have to say. He wrote this in 1943, you know, right when the World War II situation was happening and let's see, I guess, I guess he gave these lectures. It says C.S. Lewis was invited to give a series of radio lectures addressing the central issues of Christianity and now these lectures have been pop, um, published, so we'll see. I picked up another C.S. Lewis and this is his fictional book, The Screwtape Letters. And this is a really beautiful edition. It is illustrated. It has a little ribbon bookmark. So pretty. And this is basically about... Okay, this is going to be hard to explain, but it's really interesting, the premise. And it's about kind of like how the demonic devil's um, system might work. Like kind of like how there are these demons and they're in charge of like different sections of the world, different like different territories, 
and there are these head demons and they send out their little like minion demons to do their work for them and then there's like the little like junior demons go to school to learn how to lead people astray and things like that and so I guess it's like this junior demon is finally sent out by his head demon to take over one of the territories and he's writing letters to the head demon whose name is Screwtape like telling him about his progress and how he's getting people to sin and leading them astray and like leading them towards hell and all this stuff and I've just heard so much about this over the years my best friend loves this um, she said she read it and it really like changed her so <laughs> I really want to read this check out those illustrations and then I really love how the edges are like this gold gilded I don't know I'm really interested I've never read it so I definitely want to then I picked up The 100 by Cass Morgan and as you know there's a CW show based off of this and I don't know what this is about but I've heard a lot about this and I feel like there was a devastating nuclear war and people couldn't live on earth anymore so they were living on spaceships above earth and this is about like 100 juvenile delinquents considered expendable by society are being sent on a dangerous mission to recolonize the planet. It could be their second chance at life or it could be a suicide mission. So I've heard that the books are good but I've heard mixed things. Some people like them, some people don't. It's a whole series and this is the first one so we'll see. I've never seen the, the show but I feel like after I read that I might watch the television show. We'll see. Then I picked up the Good Sister, a novel by Jamie Kane, and this is about three sisters who have a very unconventional upbringing. And I believe one of their sisters, one of the sisters dies, and everything just completely changes. Um, each sister kind of had a role, and especially with no stabilizing influence in their lives, I guess their parents aren't, you know, the most stable or. Um, normative they kind of relied on each other so when one of the sisters dies everything is just like thrown off whack and this is about that I picked up a new adult by Nare Dawn and this is searching for beautiful I've read one of Nare or Nare Dawn's books before I don't remember which one it was it was a while back it was like in 2012 or 2011 and I enjoyed it I did so that's primarily why I picked this one up um, before it happened, Bryn had a group of best friends, a boyfriend who loved her, a growing talent for pottery. She had a life, and then she had none. After it happened, the boy she now knew never loved her, the friends who felt she betrayed their trust, the new life just beginning to grow inside her. Bryn believes her future is as empty as her body until Christian, the boy next door, starts coming around, playing his guitar and pushing her to create art again. She meets some new friends at the local community center, plus even gets her dad to look at her in the eye, sort of but letting someone in isn't as easy as it seems. Now, can Bryn open up her heart to truly find her life's own beauty when living for the after means letting go of the before? Ooh, it has a nice soft cover. Don't you love those soft covers? Oh, another Laverell Spencer I missed. This one is Small Town Girl. And this is about a girl who left her small town 18 years ago, or a woman I should say, and then I guess she moves back and um, I don't know there's something going on with the guy next door I think I've read this one but I don't remember <laughs> but yeah I picked up this beauty of a book lovely dark and deep by Amy McNamara and I've kind of heard a little bit about this but not too much it's the winner of the 2013 International Reading Association's Young Adult Book Award Whew, what a mouthful but yeah it won that <laughs> the cover is absolutely stunning like just beautiful this photograph is everything can you see the girl sitting at the bottom of the tree I just noticed that and the back of the book is just equally as pretty um, Ren Wells is trying to outrun the accident that killed her boyfriend and wrecked her plans to live a normal life instead of going to college she retreats to her father's isolated isolated art studio there in the remote northern woods of Maine, she meets Cal Owen, a boy who wears his own hurt like a badge. But when their connection threatens Ren's hard-won isolation, she has to choose. Open up her broken heart or join the ghosts who haunt her. This sounds really good and it says it's written in this like beautiful poetic prose, so yes. I finally picked up Poison Princess by Cressley Cole and Cressley Cole is one of my favorite romance authors she also writes um 
romance novels and I love her. I love her paranormal romance series. I can't remember the name of it, but maybe I'll put a picture of it in this video. But she wrote a young adult series and this is book one. I don't really know what it's about to be honest with you. Um, so I'm interested to get into it. I think there are quite a few books out now, so maybe if I like this, I can get the next few. Then I picked up this nonfiction, Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Jeff Chang, that's the other, <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. But this is the winner of the American Book Award, and it has an introduction by DJ Cool Herc, and it's a history of the hip-hop generation, which... I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I really love hip-hop music. <laughs> Maybe that seems strange, but I do really enjoy it. Especially the earlier stuff, like from the 90s, and even earlier than that. Not so much the stuff of today, but... So I'm really intrigued by this, and I'm really, 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 really eager to read this. And this seems actually like a really cool summer read for, um, for a non-fiction novel. Then I picked up books... Um, three and four in the Unwind series by Neil Schusterman. Um, I read Unwind in January and it was amazing. I gave it five stars. I loved it. I haven't read the second book yet, but I saw these two on Book Outlet and I figured I might as well go ahead and pick them up because I do want to read the entire series. Unfortunately, I had to get mismatching. This is hardback and this is paperback, but it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I think I'm going to collect the other ones in paperback though. I just, yeah. Um, but you know, it's alright. I'll live with it. So I cannot wait to finish this series. It, the first book was so good. I really recommend it. It's a dystopian and honestly it's probably the best dystopian I've ever read next to like Animal Farm. Actually I probably even like it better than Animal Farm. But it's about a society where abortion no longer exists. Instead, there is now a law where at the age of 13, parents can um, sign away their kids to be unwound. And that basically means they no longer exist in their full form. They are instead go through this, oh my god, it's horrific just thinking about it. Reading that scene in the book just was horrific. Reading an unwinding scene. Anyway, I digress. It is a, what is the word I'm looking for? An operation where... The human body is literally taken apart and then those parts are given to people in need. People who need a heart, a lung, a liver, a fingernail, a an ear, whatever. And so that way the person is not technically dying but going on to live through other people and you know there's still some good coming out of that whole situation. <sighs> so good. You have to read it. I highly recommend. Last book is a picture book. You know how I love those. This is, as you can see, Nelson Mandela, Words and Paintings by Kadir Nelson. So, I don't know if this my battery died, y'all. Kadir Nelson, I don't know if um, he or she is related to Nelson Mandela. Well, probably not, because it's, who knows. But this caught my eye, and it's actually what spurred the entire haul once I found this. You know how it is, you have to add other books to your cart. So it's purple on the inside. This is some of just some of the illustrations. So beautiful. Wow. Really stunning, guys. Like. But yeah, that's it. Let me see if I can get them all and hold them up for you. So with 19 books, as you can guess, I can't hold them all up at one time. But here's my first stack right here. I don't know, guys. Yeah, so here's stack number one, right here, and plus the picture book, here is stack number two, right here. And that is it. That is my haul. Whew, oh my gosh, I'm out of breath. I need to get some water. I will catch you guys in my next video. Thumbs up. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Catch me on Instagram and Twitter. I will put my handles in this video. I'm not that active on in uh, Twitter, but I am super active on Instagram if you want to follow up with my day-to-day -day life. And I will catch you in the next video. Oshalay, signing out. Bye.